Hi and welcome to the winter in Jokkmokk. I'm Stina and today I'm gonna show you seven types of winter boots and I'm gonna talk about what you should think of when you choose warm boots for your winter adventure. But today it's minus 20 degrees outside. It's really beautiful but cold to sit still and show boots so let's go inside this my little cabin and I show you the boots in there. Oh, now we're inside, a little bit warmer even if it's a bit cold in here, it hasn't been heated up for quite a long time, so. Well, uh, as I said, I'm Stina and me and my partner Matti live at the Arctic Circle in a small town called Jokkmokk in the north of Sweden. And we run an outdoor company and take people out on adventures all year round. In winter we do dog sledding tours and we are out working in extreme winter condition with lots of snow, ice and the temperatures can sometimes go down as slow as minus 50 degrees Celsius. So we have really good experience of how to keep warm in Arctic climate. I moved up here from South Sweden in 2004 and I'm that kind of person who easily gets cold feet. So during my years here I have learned how to best keep my feet warm in the cold weather. Note that all of these boots I show maybe not be possible to buy worldwide but with these boots I want to show different type of boots and even if you don't find the exact same one, you will probably find uh, boots that are very alike and of the same type. So let's start with our classical warm winter boot. This is a rather classical winter boot uh, in Sweden. It's called, very often called a snowmobile boot. And it's not so many brands that produce this kind of heavy duty extreme winter boots anymore. Uh, this one is an old one from Kamik. It's called Kamik Oslo. Uh, today Kamik has changed them a little bit and now they are called instead Kamik Kanuk. I have only seen the Kanuk boot on pictures but when I look at them it looks like they have a lower toe box than this old one. This is the toe box which gives less air around your toes and your toes are the part of your foot that easiest <laughs> that is hardest to keep warm so with that said you should in all winter boots have enough space around your foot even if you have several layers of wool socks on the boot should be big enough so you can wiggle your toes properly um, i for example have size European 40 in my summer shoes but in winter time I go up two or three sizes so then I have like 40, 42 or 43. So back to the boot again. Uh, this boot, I don't know if you hear it but if you hear it crackling it's just the wood in the wood stove that's burning so that's why it's crackling. Uh, yeah these boots have a thick um, inner shoe that you can take out which is great when you need to dry them and they also have a thick inner sole. Some brands also sell separate liners so you can have two to switch between. The pros with this boot is that they will keep you warm in most temperatures. It's a high boot and you can tie it properly so you don't get snow inside. It's made of a tough material that uh, can stand heavy use and it uh, withstand water pretty good. Uh, the downside with it is that it is quite heavy and pretty clumsy to wear. This is also the type of uh, boot we have for our guests to borrow when they come on dog sledding tours with us. And uh, we actually just bought new ones that got delivered the other day. Uh, these are produced and sell only to outdoor companies and hotels etc that buy them in big numbers so they are not possible to buy for a private person just a pair. Um, this model we got now 
doesn't look as good as the one we had before but it was minus 25 the other day and I took them on on a training run with the dogs and to try them out and I felt warm and cozy on my feet the whole trip so they seem to be very good. Here is another classical winter boot. It's a leather boot with a hard bottom and with a felt liner inside. This exact boot is called Jörnsängan Antifrys. It's a handmade Swedish boot and it's only produced in very small numbers so it's very hard to get hold of. But there are many other brands who make the similar type of leather boots with a hard bottom. Matti's own words about this boot is that he likes them because they're very wear resistant and they are pretty waterproof if you treat the leather properly. Uh, it's not a so super warm boot even if he wears uh, three layers of wool socks inside them. The original liner is not the warmest so when it's colder uh, Matti usually wear one of these other thicker wool liners. Uh, it's warmer but it's not as durable as the original liner. I have tried these boots and I don't like them at all. One reason is that I think they are too hard. You see your foot is totally stiff in it and uh, they are also quite slippery in snow. Why I don't like hard boots take us over to the next boot. This is a super lightweight rubber winter boot. Um, this one is from a brand called Vobby and uh, they are totally waterproof just like a uh, rain boot. Uh, they have a rather thin synthetic liner but it is surprisingly warm. Uh, we have worn, worn them down to minus 20 celsius uh, and haven't felt cold. Of course we have had two pairs of wool socks inside uh, but the whole boot is so soft and uh, when a boot is soft like this it makes your uh, feet muscles work all the time and that I think would help your feet to keep warm. Both me and Matti have a pair of these and we use them a lot during uh, autumn. So for anyone living where it's rather cold but you don't have snow uh, I will recommend this boot. Um, Vobby also makes uh, other uh, rubber boots for the rest of the year and I like them a lot. Uh, for one reason is that they are lightweight and soft but the other rubber boots we have had before usually break after one season. These don't. Uh, you can't almost not, not see that we have used them for a whole autumn. I will put the link to Vobby and, uh, in the description and of course I will also put the names of all the other boots I talk about in this video. Woo! Now over to my favorite winter boot. This is a Nesna Lobben, or also called Polar Lobben. It's a Norwegian wool felt boot with a soft rubbery sole. This type of boot only works in dry winter conditions like we have here in the inland of Swedish Lapland. Uh, we usually have very dry winters here, maybe not. I cannot use them in the beginning of the winter when it could be wet and rainy and not also in the late spring when things start to melt, but I can use them most of the winter season actually. The pros with having a felt boot like this is that it shapes after your foot. Uh, it doesn't weight much and it's uh, uh, the wool breathes so you don't get as sweaty as you get in many other boots and I also like that it is high and I can tie it properly all the way up. A little strange and funny thing with these boots is that they are uh, there are no left and right foot they are both the same <laughs> yeah it's true I will show you here you see It's the same. But if you wear them on the same foot all the time, they shape after your foot. And I have 
never felt any ne negative with that they there are no left or right foot but I always wear the same boot on the same foot <laughs> so yeah another great thing with this boot is that the grip of the sole is excellent I never slip in these boots well I slip if it's very slip if it's very icy but then you slip in all boots so yeah the boot in itself is quite warm but I always uh, wear two pair of wool socks inside of them and I also wear the felt uh, wool felt liner that Matti used in his uh, hard boot and I with this combo I can use them down to minus 20 celsius these are quite small in sizes and as I said before I have in my summer shoes I have a European size 40 but in these I need four times bigger so I have 45, 44 in these boots. I have used this model uh, for about I think uh, six years now and this is my second pair which I start to use in the end of last season. So even if they look very fragile, because they are made of felt, they are very good quality and hold for a very long time. Uh, considering I using them almost every day in winter and we have long winter of six months up here. So if I could make these boots even better, I would, uh, I would like them to have a leather cover on top of the wool that would make them a little bit more water resistant and with that said we come over to the next boot this boot is called Luddan it's also a Swedish brand it's the, just what I wished for a leather covered wool felt shoe but the felt is thinner than on the polar loben that I showed you before and also this boot is low. Uh, before I found Polar Loben I used these ones a lot and was very happy with them. I used them in the same way as with the Polar Loben. I had uh, two wool socks and a felt liner inside them. Uh, I had one pair, I worn them out and uh, I ordered a second pair and the second pair I only used for a very short time and then the sole loose got loose i sent them in for a pair they glued the sole again and i got them back and just after a week the sole loose again so i sent them back for a second time and after that i got a brand new pair which is this one but the same thing happened again the sole got loose now we try to glue them ourselves and they have just been laying in a box for uh, several years I would say uh, but now I took them out again and thought I, I can use them just a, as a wear and tear boot when we're feeding and taking care of the dogs in the kennels and when it doesn't hold anymore I sadly has to discard them. So what do we use when it's really cold and like minus 30 or colder? Well then we use these. Both me and Matti has one pair of these. Uh, we use them a little bit different but I will show you. This is a so-called over boot and they are made to wear over other boots to increase the warmth. They are insulated and uh, rather soft with an aggressive uh, sole with good grip and inside them is also a very thick inner sole. I use them when it's super cold and inside them I wear a Russian stiff felt boot and inside that one I have my normal uh, wool liner and then I of course have a double wool socks. This keep me warm but I feel like a Bigfoot and becomes very clumsy in them but they for sure make their work and keeps my feet warm and toasty even in the coldest temperatures. Matti do not uh, use as many layers inside as I do. He use um, <coughs> an old um, inner shoe from the Kamik boot, the first boot I showed you in this video. And uh, inside that he have three wool socks, but he doesn't have so sensitive toes as I do. 
Last winter I actually never wore these boots. Uh, one reason is that the temperatures never dip down as low as minus 40. Uh, and I also figured out that if I use one of these foot warmers in my favorite boot, the Polaloben, I managed down to minus 30, 32 Celsius, which was the coldest we had last winter. I will put the link to the toe warmers in the description. Uh, these are from Hot Hands and they actually hold all the hours that they say on the package, which many brands don't. So now over to a little bit different kind of winter boot. Now we come to the last winter boot I will present for you in this video. It's something for you who look for something a little bit more stylish. It's not super warm, but it's surprisingly warm. Um, it's a little bit odd uh, from the other ones that are more uh, rough uh, outdoor boots. I actually bought them just to have them for go shopping in the town or have something a little bit more fancier uh, doing other things than being in the bush. And, uh, but they have surprised me in both warmth and quality. This is a suede boot from Moon Boot and uh, it does not have a loose felt liner as the, many of the other ones. It's only insulated with a synthetic fur. Uh, it doesn't look so warm but what makes this uh, different from many other urban stylish winter boots is that it has a very thick insole. And a lot of the cold comes from the ground and creeps up in your foot, so I think the insole uh, makes a difference uh, from other boots to this one and makes this one warmer. I wouldn't wear it on a dog sledding tour in minus 20 or even minus 15, but it's good down to minus 7, minus 8. Um, and of course, I wear double wool socks inside of these as well. Now I hope you have learned a thing or two about winter boots and don't forget that what you wear inside them is as important as the boot. And I have actually made a video about that. I will put a link to that video in the description and up here. And uh, write in the comments what is your favorite boot and why it's always nice to share with each other. So until next time, take care and don't forget to give a thumb up and subscribe if you want to see more of our life and adventures or more videos about outdoor stuff like this. Bye!